What's going on YouTube? Back for another episode here and I thought it would be fun to make a video about where gyms have come from, how they progressed over the years, where they started because that's what my channel is primarily about and that's where my passion lies so let's dive into it right away. So the word gymnasium originated from the Greek word gymnos which is translated to, to naked. So as you can tell by that first word right there their the huge part of their philosophy was sculpting the body, fitness, care of the body, as you can see by so many of their ancient sculptures and Greek mythology characters and all the rest of it. So when it first started out, these gyms were primarily men inside, almost all men, and they were primarily to train athletes for open games, such as the Olympics, and keep them in top physical shape. So after the fall of the Greek Greco-Roman empires, Gyms, along with the art and music, disappeared, and the pursuit of a nice physique was no longer highly regarded as it was prior to that. So, not until the early 1800s that gyms started to come back with a resurgence in Europe and primarily in Germany. So, first commercial gym that was credited was by a French gymnast and strongman named Hippolyte Triad. And he opened the first club in Brussels and then a second in Paris in the 1840s. And right around that time, as I mentioned in a prior video, if you guys haven't seen it yet, the first YMCA was opened in London, England in 1844. So this was also another pioneer in the modern day health club. So then progressing a little farther, closer to 1900, Eugene Sandow, who is credited to being the father of bodybuilding, and those who don't know, Mr. Olympia first place trophy is now named after him. So this just is a testament to how much he did for the bodybuilding community. So he opened the first physique institute and showed and had the first bodybuilding show in 1901. Like I said, I'm going over an overview. Research these guys more for yourself because this is such an interesting story and I'm just scratching the surface of it. So then in 1939, another massive character in the fitness industry, Jack Lalonde, who's referred to as the godfather of modern fitness, started what is believed to be the first health club in 1939 in Oakland, California. And what I didn't realize until I started researching either is that he created a primitive version of the leg extension, pulley machine with cables and weight selectors and all the rest of this. So this man was amazing because in that era, there were so many people who lived off smokes, who lived off sugar, just like now, but nobody ever brought it to the forefront until Jack Lalonde was realizing that when he was in high school, he wasn't feeling great and he knew that diet and exercise would do something about it. So he, this man died in 2011, but like I said, look up his life also online, research it, read some books about him. And then, of course, in 1965, Joel Gold created the Mecca of Bodybuilding in Venice, California, which was featured in the 1975 Pumping Iron documentary, as I'm sure many of you have seen it or know about it. And then he also started World Gym in 1977. As before this, women were never weirdly in the gyms. And this brought women into the scene but brought it mainstream just so everybody just so everybody knew you saw videos of Arnold discussing the benefits for women all the rest of it, so it also became more popular because places like 24 hour fitness in 1983 originated LA fitness soon after in 1984 and Jack Lalonde's European Health Club which he started there was more than 200 of them and then they later became Bally Fitness which eventually went bankrupt Girls didn't want to go to places where they were intimidated or where they didn't feel welcome and health clubs were a place for them to go into and feel welcome and feel comfortable. So I thought I would just give this little tidbit of information and I hope you guys learned something from this video and if you enjoyed it, please put a thumbs up and please subscribe if you haven't yet. We'll catch you next time.